So how do we support uh, definitions? So how do we extend our language lambda e so that we can now start thinking about definitions? Um, to do that, first let's go back to our um, revisit our abstract syntax tree. And now we need to introduce terms, which we talked a bit about when we, right in the beginning, when we start thinking about how do we parse, define, how do we parse all of those basic definitions, all those things. Um, so if you think back to that, you will remember that there is an, a thing known as a term. And a term is not an expression, although it could be one expression, but it's also something that is not an expression, it's a define. And the terms, terms also evaluate, right? They, they evaluate such as expressions they evaluate, but terms are a bit different because they allow you to create variables that are then accessible outside of the scope, right? So you do a define followed by some, um, you define X and it's defined, it's sorry, that variable X is visible at wh for whatever code follows that term. Here I'm using the semicolon notation, uh, but there is no semicolons in Racket, as you know. It's just to represent uh, a, a term followed by another. So, as you know, when we evaluate the fines, they should um, return, they return void, and void is not printed to screen. But somehow we need to represent void in our AST, right? Because we want to be able to say that when we evaluate the define, it should return void. So now we have to do a few changes, right? We have a novelty, which is now we have this um, notion of terms, and they can be either an expression. This we're calling a sequence, right? Sequence of T, this term followed by another term. And then a define. And we have a new value, which is void. Okay. So, um, lambda f is a language that I'm only going to use in this lecture. It's not really going to be needed for the homework. Although the syntax is the same as the one you're using in homework 5, uh, lambda f, I'm going to use it in today's lecture just to define a language that is incorrect a naive implementation of defines uh, that is incorrect. And I want to motivate that to make you think what do we need to do to actually support defines that is not very trivial. So um, let's look at how we represent um, the abstract syntax tree. The only novelty here is void. And as you might expect, void is just a struct uh, with no field. So it's just open and close parentheses. So if I write um, my code, let me just comment this out. If I write, um, for the sake of this lecture, I've defined lambda f, which I can open for you to see. So there's lots of code, ignore, you don't really need to go through this, but what we care for the sake of this exercise is really to look at the AST. And the AST is defined here. Okay, so values are here, highlighted in blue, and the novelties uh, that we have closures. So we can, uh, sorry, not closures, but um, void. Uh, so we can call a void uh, just by doing void. So when we run that, we should just see f colon void, which is great. So you cannot pass any values to it, but now we have a new value more uh, other than a number. That's also a value. And we also have a closure. Closure. And as you know, inside a closure, you have to write closure. Inside a closure, you have to write a lambda. Uh, lambda. And inside the lambda, you can write a list. Inside that list, you have to write another list. So for now, let's just write uh, a list that returns uh, f number one. Okay, so this is a function. All functions actually should only take one parameter. So let's just return one parameter, variable x. 
Okay, so this represents lambda x that returns 1. Inside the closure, that on the left hand side, let's write uh, an empty environment. So as you know, hash is the empty environment. What I'm trying to write here is a closure with an empty environment and just a lamp there. So we write that. That's what we have here. Okay. Um, and then we have a way to represent um, terms. So if we want to write a define define x10 we should write as f define um, f variable x f number 10 we run that we have the value here okay that's all good um, another thing that we see here is a sequence. So a sequence is, let's say you define, um, let's say you want to write define x10 followed by um, x, right? So the way I would write that, I would write sec and then uh, all this. variable x and then I write here this is what would represent um, the code above above so first a define of x 10 and then x so here we're just writing uh, AST terms um, note that because we are talking about um, ASTs, we only have basic definitions. As you remember, as you might recall, a function definition is just syntactic sugar for for uh, the abstract notion of define. Okay, but as you know, writing all this is very cumbersome. So what we want to do is actually write. Um, lambda f and homework 5 also has the equivalent of that uh, we want to have a way to parse the terms directly and just write quoted terms um, in a quick way so how do we do that well if we do uh, f parse one of uh, void does it support void actually I don't know if it supports void right, so if we write void we get exactly the same thing so let's just do tests now. Require write unit. Okay, so we can do check equal. So writing f void is the same as parsing uh, void. And writing um, in writing f number is the same as parsing the number ten. And um, and parsing a closure is the same as writing um, check equal closure, and then we do this because it's the empty hash, and then inside we pass. Uh, exactly this. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, this should be.
actually let me see if this let me get back to this in a second because I have a slide that explains that um, let's first make sure I can parse um, a lambda okay as you can see lambda is parsed correctly so we can make sure that um, check equal of parse is the same as writing um, this this whole thing with the correct number of parentheses ah okay So the body of a um, of a lambda is exactly one term because we always only have one term, so we don't actually represent it with a list of um, arguments. Okay. So the last thing we need to know how to parse is um, what else? Define. So now. Uh, f parse one only defines only parses a single thing, so we could still parse Right, so this still parses that. But here, notice that we have multiple instructions. So how do we write that? We need to have a way to parse a sequence of commands and we cannot use parse one. Parse one just parses a single command. So what we need to do is parse, um, parse takes a list, right? And the list uh, now is gonna have uh, first a define, x10 followed by x so this should be the same as defining this oops what no this is here and this is this and this is this and now we, what we want to do is check equal and we want to check if the thing we are parsing is the same as this. And we check it. OK. So this all makes sense. We talked about that. We talked about this. Uh, for closures, I would just recommend uh, we look at. We need. I don't actually remember how we write closures by heart. I need to recall the other lesson. For now, I just wanted to show you the difference between fparse and fparse1. Okay, so that's it. Thank you.